Hello and welcome to another video by Johnny. So, in this video, I will be um, talking about a chemistry topic in, in organic chemistry, but most probably inorganic, but it can also be applied to organic chemistry as well because the principles are quite similar. Um, also, I'm sorry for <laughs> not producing video like too often. I know um, a lot of you guys have been supporting me uh, and I have received a lot of um, nice comments and encouragements for my work. But unfortunately, you know, I work full time as a uh, freelance, uh, freelance tutor in six different subjects of piano, English, um, I basically trained for the IELTS exam, chemistry, physics, biology, and maths as well. So my schedule are pretty um, busy. <laughs> I have no days out. So um, if I find time to make more videos, I do, <laughs> and then, then I just make it. All right, so enough. Let's go to the video. And um, in this video, I'll talk about I will talk about types of bondings different types of bonding or linkages bondings that you hear in chemistry so before I go into details I would like to tell you something that there are intramolecular bondings intramolecular inside of, uh, of the same molecules so the bonding inside of the same molecules and there are also something called intermolecular forces inter in between so intermolecular forces is between the different molecules. So these are different. I will talk about it uh, in a later part of this video, okay? But now intramolecular forces. So you see substances I draw, on, I drew on the board like this, okay? And your task is to identify the type of bonding, what it is. So either it's a non-polar covalent bonds or polar covalent bonds or ionic bonds, or any, any kind of bonding. Right. <clears throat> so the secret to, um, to get to know what kind of bonding it is lies in the knowledge about electro electronegativity. Electronegativity. So here, uh, I don't know if you have uh, seen my other videos about electronegativity. What is, it? What is electronegativity? It is the ability of an atom to attract electron from any other places to it. So, um, for example, here I drew, uh, I wrote down like six most common elements that we will always encounter in our chemistry study. So, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, and fluorine. So, of course, the one with the highest number will be the most attractive to electrons, so hence, it is highly electronegative, okay? So I would recommend you to remember these six numbers, because this will be very useful in organic chemistry or other things as well in your later study. Very important, okay? Now, so without further ado, let's go on. So based on the differences, Based on the differences between the atoms in the same molecules, you can determine what type of bonding or linkage linkages. For example, if you minus these two numbers, take the bigger minus the lower, you get some number. Like for example, this one, 2.5 minus 2.2, you get 0.3, right? And that lies in this region from 0 to 0 0.5. So that bonding will be a non-polar covalent bond. Okay. Another example. If I take, for example, this molecule between the C and the O. So between 2.5 and 3.5, you can see there's a difference of 1.0, right? So it lies in this region. Between 0 0.5 and 1.5. So this bonding will be a polar covalent bonds. So what does polar and whatever it means? Polar means like the electrons are more pulled into one atom while the others are like starved of electrons. You can imagine like this. 
If you have a brother or sister and he or she takes away your cookies, like you have only three cookies while, while he or she has seven, that is polar, right? It's not an equal sharing. Covalent means like a sharing, but sometimes sharing uh, is not like 5 5, 50 50, you know, like this. But sometimes like 3 7, and it's not fair, I know. But this word is never fair, you have to fight for it. So here you have a polar covalent bonds. And how about ionic bonds? Well, I will cover it later, but if the difference is bigger than 1.8, you expect to have ionic bonds. It often they form between metal and non-metal. So for example, sodium, Na, and fluorine, for example, F. So metals often have metals often have very low electronegativity. I think for sodium it's 0 0.8. For fluorine it's like 4. So the difference is like 3.2, which is massive. So surely it's very ionic, ionic. What is ionic? It means one thing it's keeping everything, or almost everything, and the other atom is like very little. Imagine it like this. If you take like nine cookies and your sister only have one cookies, that is very ionic. When you are very full, while your sister is very hungry. So that's how I that's how I put it. Ionic bond is a very unequal sharing. It's actually not a sharing at all. It's like grabbing, grabbing. It's like actually grabbing electrons. All right, so let's try to do some uh, example here. Okay, try with methane. What kind of bonding it is? That's right. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.3 so that is a non-polar covalent bonds okay try this one for water that's right the difference is 1.3 which is here it is a polar covalent bonds this one is also similar okay because they are they are similar they are also O and H how about ammonia this one that's right. The difference is 0 0.8, which is here. So it's polar covalent bond. How about this one? CO2. That's right. Don't worry about double bond or something. It's just a bonding. So the difference one. So this is a polar covalent bond. This is also polar covalent too. Okay, try for the others if you want. Okay, try this one. That's correct. 4 minus 2.5 uh, is 1.5. It's um, polar covalent bond. This one is also polar covalent bond. This one is non-polar covalent bond. This is non-polar covalent bond. Alright, try with the other ones on this board if you want to. And then you can pause this video at any time. And then I'll move on to the next thing I would like to mention to you. <clears throat> okay. So what exactly? So basically, if you have a, a non-equal sharing, for example, water, this molecule, this uh, atom, oxygen, it takes away the electron from the bonding with the hydrogens. And this one also being taken away. So you can see the electron is moving to the oxygen, right? So this bonding is like this. And the vector sum, the sum of the vector between them will be this. So you can see this is molecule because of the shape a V shape like that. So the, the oxygen is like taking away electron pulling from the two different direction like this. So the sum of the vector of the movement of the electron is this. So water is quite polar. So it has a direction of the movement of the electron. So the water is quite polar.
How about this one? CO2. Because of the shape of the molecule like this, this is 180 degree. So even though the oxygen is taking the oxygen is taking away electron from the carbon and this one also taking. But these two vectors they cancel out because they are 180 degree from each other. So this molecule CO2 doesn't have the vectors, the sum of the vectors of the movement of the uh, electron. So it's like it cancels out. So this molecule is non-polar molecule. Okay. So recap a bit. The bonding inside of the same molecule can be any of these three, but the whole molecule is different. It depends on the shape of the molecule and the strength of the bondings and the sum of the vectors, right? For example, I put the two examples here. All right, so this is non-polar molecule. How about ammonia? Try it on your own. So nitrogen is taking away from the hydrogen like this like that and like this so it looks like this so you can see that it doesn't cancel out right it's like it's like um, this and the vector sum will point upward so the vector sum will point upward like this So ammonia, it's polar for sure because it has a vector sum of all the um, electrons moving. So ammonia is polar. Okay. Try it for methane. You will realize that methane is non-polar. Because it depends on the geometry, the shape of that molecules. So, um... For example, like this. But then you also have the one on top, which cancel everything out. So it's like uh, the one on top is like canceling everything out. So it's very similar to ammonia, but now you have the one on top to cancel this vector out. It used to be like this, it should be like this, right? But you have a one on top to cancel everything out. So that's why this one looks like this. And the result is canceling everything out. That's why methane is non-polar. Okay, is it understandable? Now, try for yourself these four. That's right. Moving like this. But then you have to see which one is a bigger movement. So these three contribute like, um, like this. But then because the, the pooling of the chlorine is bigger than the rest of the three, so the net movement of electron is from the left to the right. You can see, uh, you can, I can redraw it like this for you. So these three contribute to vector sum which is point this way. And then plus this one. That's why the sum of everything is huge, going from the left to the right. So this molecule is polar. Okay, try chlorofluoromethane and you will see that it's like this. So first thing, this two point this way and uh, it create a vector sum like this while the um, fluorine and the chlorine is like this. So it create a vector sum this way. So the two vector sum actually can, uh, 
will um, become something bigger like this. And as a result, this molecule is polar this way. Oh, I forgot. If it's pointing this way, it means the electron will have to move to this direction. So this direction will be more negative, and this direction will be more positive. Because there are more electrons moving this way, so more negative here, more partially positive here, more partially negative there. Try the other ones. If you don't consider the hydrogens, then the molecules look very much like it can cancel out each other, right? But now there are hydrogen present. So of course this molecule will not be able to be, um, how can I say, not, uh, not non-polar. I'm sure it's not non-polar. So these two will contribute to a vector sum this way, and the, these two will contribute to a vector sum this way. So uh, it will, the two will combine together to become this one, and together with that one. So of course, this molecule will be like this, polar. Okay. Try nitric acid. If there's anything I say you don't understand, please comment below, or try to rewind back the video and watch it again. You will, you will get it. Okay, try nitric acid. This way, going this way, electron moving this way, that way, but then this way as well. So, without a hydrogen, it looks like these three is gonna cancel each other out. But now, with hydrogen present there, surely it's not cancelling out. So, this vector and this vector. It looks like it's going this way, right? But then, these two vectors will produce this one. And you see these two vectors? Surely, it's not going to produce anything that uh, zero, right? So it's this polar. So that's why nitric acid is polar. Okay. I hope the video was not too long for you, and I hope it was helpful for you. In my next video, perhaps I'm going to talk more about intermolecular inter forces, and stay tuned for more video, okay? Johnny out. Please subscribe, like, and share my videos, okay? And also don't forget to um, press on the bell button. Right next to the subscribe button, there's a bell. So push on that, click on that. You will get notified by my new videos. Thank you so much, and Johnny out.